Want to hear a scary story? It takes place in a haunted house called the nonprofit sector. <laughs> Next to raising awareness, reposting a change.org petition, and visiting a foreign country to snap pictures with children whose skin tone is a far cry from their own pasty complexions, we Caucasians go gaga, absolutely mad, over four numbers and one lowercase letter. 501c3. Mm. The ghoulish nonprofit entity that I work for has a lot to offer in the well intentioned world of children's theater. To protect the innocent, I can't tell you the name of the actual organization, only to say that it was inspired by a movie starring sexual predator Kevin Spacey. For this tale of nonprofit terror, it will be known only as. Kevin's kids. <laughs> the teaching artists and volunteer mentors of Kevin's kids work in underfunded schools and high needs communities, as well as with youth in juvenile prisons, foster care, and other places where nobody gives a shit. Who cares about kids? Kevin does. On a crisp sheet of white paper, Kevin's kids appears to be doing good. But take a closer look, and you'll see that from the inception of the original mission statement, this company was baptized in the waters of white saviorism. Because while most of the teaching artists, partners, and participants are PGM and BIPOC, the majority of the staff and board are MCA and m, &M. Upon my arrival at Kevin's Kids, I quickly noticed that the organization had only one single solitary member who wasn't white. The white executive director, who for this horror yarn shall be referred to only as Green Book Gretchen, didn't seem to notice or care. She was too busy serving the underprivileged. Abiding by her personal philosophy, it was mandatory that every meeting Every workshop, every program begin with a check-in. State your name? Absolutely. Rate how you're feeling on a scale of one to 10? You'd better believe it. Say your pronouns and answer a daily fun question like, if you were a soup, what type of soup would you be? <laughs> Damn right, you non-conforming ham and split pea. And yet, with all this fuss placed on safety and inclusion, Green Book Gretchen was oblivious to the fact that she was the orchestrator of a nonprofit nightmare. Scared yet? This tour of nonprofit horror has just begun. Within a short time of my hiring, I noticed that Green Book Gretchen had a habit of talking down to people who were not white. Her dismissal of racial matters became more apparent when she flat out stated that Kevin's kids shouldn't post a statement of solidarity or support during the Black Lives Matter movement. She dismissed any notion of racism on her part, especially when it came to her job. Take, for instance, the annual company gala. Each spring, Kevin bussed his black and brown kids into affluent neighborhoods for the wealthy elite to throw dollars at the organization. Oh then gave those same kids the slip out the back door before dinner was served. To most of the staff, this was considered uh, racist. Uh, very <laughs> racist. Not Klansmen burning a cross on the front lawn racist, more like Karen racist. Green Book Gretchen didn't even blink when one day the only black staff member simply disappeared. Gone into the ether, never to be heard from again. That was the end of program director number one. Program director number two came along a few months later. This time, it was a young black man who moved all the way across the country in the midst of a pandemic to work for Kevin's kids. He navigated Green Book Gretchen's white workspace for five months before quitting. Exiting her haunted mansion of altruism, this man made sure to call out the organization as racist on Instagram, even tagging Green Book Gretchen in the post. <laughs> Nevertheless, that was the end of program director number two. 
I was mortified by all of this happening in less than a year's time. I also felt frustrated, not to mention helpless in my position. My job, like in many nonprofit roles, forced me to straddle many circles. I had one foot in with the teaching artists and staff, one foot in with the administration, but no real power or say in either realm. Kevin's kids locked me in the industrial pantry of middle management. I screamed for someone to open the door in emails, in person, on Zoom calls, but every attempt to sound the alarm was thwarted by Green Book Gretchen, who plugged her ears and turned it all into white noise. <laughs> Program director number three was hired a short while later, this time a black woman from the community. On her first day, it became clear that Green Book Gretchen had not told her one detail about the fate of her predecessors. Zip, zero, nothing. When I informed program director number three of the entire racist saga, she stepped up. Like a boss, she organized an open discussion about race at the company's annual fall training. Of course, Green Book Gretchen did not even think to attend this discussion nor did any members of the board. Months passed since program director number two's Instagram post had gone out in the world, but all the higher-ups at Kevin's Kids had said nothing. No public statement, no calls to action, no real reform within the company. Dead silence. By the time summer ended, our teaching artists were done. Their answer to Green Book Gretchen's indifference? A formalized strike. No programs, no workshops, no Kevin, no kids. This got Green Book Gretchen's attention. Due to the strike, she decided to finally open her mouth to address the situation at hand, only to broker the most ungraceful partnership between her foot and her mouth. This routine of hers continued for months, getting defensive, taking it personally, speaking instead of listening. She defended the legacy of the company, even though me and my colleagues had unearthed some damning evidence of inappropriate practices. Like a play Kevin's kids produced back in the day called Ass Naked. Just take a look at the cast list for Ass Naked. We had such well-defined characters as butt, sex, and Bitch Juanita. White people, this is some freaky shit for a theater company for kids. <laughs> Green Book Gretchen tried to cast a magical spell, but her witchy ways meant things went from bad to really racist. The teaching artists formed an independent council demanding that Kevin's kids become anti-racist, anti-colonial, and abolitionist in all aspects of the company. This was met with every white person in leadership scoffing, how could we be the villains in this scenario? We run a nonprofit. All of us are here to serve and save the poor melanated children of the inner city. <laughs> this prompted the teaching artist to demand Green Book Gretchen's resignation, which she did not give. Instead, she responded that Kevin's kids would have a company-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion training. She wouldn't be there, of course. <laughs> Neither would the board of directors, naturally. Just everyone else, all of us taking turns, yelling at our Zoom camera for three days straight, I am not a racist, but sometimes I say and do racist things. The taxing, overworking, underpaying, and gaslighting demons of Kevin haunted us day and night. Going to work now consisted of Kevin's kids screaming at each other, tears of anguish constantly running down cheeks, and everyone in a position of power insisting that they couldn't be held accountable just because their privilege was the same color as a ghost. <laughs> Under program director number three's leadership, we as a united staff outlined an organizational transformation at Kevin's Kids, one that would allow us to constantly stop asking, what's in the box? And think outside of it. <laughs> Green Book Gretchen turned a blind eye to all of it. She didn't acknowledge the labor, emotional and beyond, that program director number three had put into making these significant reforms. 
systematic changes that wouldn't just end the teaching artist strike, but would also benefit every employee regardless of what soup they identified as. <laughs> Green Book Gretchen killed the plan. And with it, every ounce of hope that program director number three had inspired amongst all of us. Blood everywhere. Sliced and diced dreams strung up as demented Hollywood, or Halloween decorations around Green Book Gretchen's office. So, like the two who came before her, program director number three quit, just shy of her 90-day review. That's three program directors, all black, all gone within 18 months. I was devastated, exhausted, wanting to quit every day. Despite program director number three's departure, the teaching artist somehow agreed on a set of terms to resume work. The only condition was that Green Book Gretchen would step down as executive director. Much to everyone's shock and dismay, she agreed to resign. And just like that, Green Book Gretchen evaporated into the pale mist of the beyond. But her spirit came back for one final haunting when she named a new program director, me. Me? Fuck me. Of all people, Kevin's Kids now has me as program director number four, the fucking white guy. I'm just as chilled to the bone as you are. I'm worried this wasn't the right decision. I'm freaked out about being able to take this position of leadership. And every day that I go to work now, I can't help but look into the black mirror of my laptop in it, I catch glimpses of my face, questioning if it is just grotesquely morphing into Green Book Gretchen or worse, just possessed by the terrifying heart of whiteness that is nonprofit work. The horror, the horror. <laughs> because programs are returning. Fundraising is ramping up. Kevin, like the white messiah zombie he believes himself to be, has risen. All the while, me and the rest of the staff have been lured into this killing machine, hypnotized to do its bidding. But the only difference is now I'm part of the machine, bigger and scarier than I ever was. The call is coming from inside the nonprofit house of horror, and it's me. Give it up for Jake Arkey!